Hey everybody, welcome to the Grace and Truth broadcast. I'm Dwayne Sheriff, and I'm excited that you're able to be with us today. I'm sharing on the subject of how faith works, and specifically three cooperative powers that work with our faith. We've looked at hope and the power of hope in our lives, and I pray that was an encouragement to you. Now we're looking at love. Love is the second cooperative power that works with faith. Many people have learned some things about faith, but they don't understand again. How does our faith, the God kind of faith, work? Well, Galatians 5, 6 says that in Christ Jesus now, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything but faith that works by love. It works through God's love. In other words, as you come to know by revelation the love God has for you, then faith is a byproduct. It's easy to believe God when you know how much he loves you. It's easy to not doubt when you understand God's love for you and his faithfulness to you and his promises to perform them. It also we've seen in 1 John chapter 4, we're going to go there again today, but in 1 John chapter 4, we saw how God's love cast out fear. Well, fear is the mortal enemy of faith. You're either operating in faith and faith only, or you're allowing fear to cancel faith in your life. And the only way to cast all this fear out is God's love for you. And man, when you see God's love for you, you just don't fear. Now you believe only, and you see how effectual faith begins to work to deal with issues in your life and to trust God in everything. So let's look again at 1 John chapter 4. We ran out of time in our last broadcast. And uh, I'm breaking down at least four things that John has revealed in 1 John chapter 4 in regards to God's love. Remember, God's love is taught, not caught. God's love is a revelation and comes by a revelation of who God is uh, versus carnal knowledge. It's a knowing, Ephesians 3 says, that passes knowledge. So let's look at what the Word says, and I just trust the Holy Spirit to minister to you right now. I don't, I don't care who you are or where you are. There's a new dimension to God's love for you for you to receive. We can't exhaust the love of God anymore. We can exhaust a knowledge of God himself because God is love. So let's look at this again. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. That, that's the first, if you will, revelation that I had to come to in the sense of that God is love Love is of God. It's not of my human reasoning. It's not of my five senses. And it's certainly not of this world. And it's not of my circumstances. You cannot discern God's love by your emotions. You can't discern God's love for you by your human reasoning. And you certainly can't discern God's love by circumstances. Well, God loves me because everything went good today. Well, what, what happens when things don't go good? Does that mean God doesn't love you? No, God's love is, is consistent. It's unconditional. It's unoccasioned. It's unmerited. It's, it's consistent. It doesn't vacillate towards you. And, and so you have to learn and settle and get rooted and grounded in a love that is of God. Now, why is this also important? I stand amazed at how many Christians let the world define love for them. Let the world, as if love is of this world, instead of love is of God. And they listen to the world and let the world pervert, absolutely distort the love of God. And that's why you have so many Christians confused. Let me say it to you this way. Love is not of Hollywood. <laughs> Love is not of the woke movement. Love is not of all the perversion. 
Love is of God. That, that's, that's number one and that we have to get rooted and grounded in. He goes on to say, let's read it again. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. People who love have to be born of God and know God. If you're not born of God and you don't have a revelation of God, you can't tell me what love is. You can't define what love is. And you can't tell me when love wins. Love is of God, not of the human race, not of anybody else. Love is of God. And the only way we can love with God's kind of love, a love that wins, God's kind of love is the love that wins. That kind of love can only be experienced and demonstrated by people who have two things, born of God, number one, and know God, number two. If you're not born of God and you don't have a revelation of God, you don't know God, you don't have a relationship, an intimate relationship with God, then you cannot explain love, you can't experience love, you can't teach other people what love is. And let me say this too, this is why there's such a, a misunderstanding in the church and many times a lack of love in the church. I can't be the only one that has thought, how can we claim to be Christians and not love one another any better than this, not understand God's love any better than this? not express God's love any better than this? Well, the answer is right here. This will answer a lot of questions for you, for your children, for your friends, if they want help and understanding. Love is of God, number one. To love, you have to be born of God and know God. Look at the next verse. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. He that does not love does not know God. Now, I'm going to make this as elementary as possible. I'm not insulting anyone's intelligence, uh, but I'm a simple guy. And I want to minister the simplicity of Jesus Christ. And we need to get back to the simplicity of, of loving Jesus and being loyal to Jesus. So let me go through this with my hands. Okay, he says, he that loves, those that love one another... They're born of God, and they know God. Then he says, he that does not love does not know God. He didn't say, he that does not love does not know God and is not born of God. To love, with God's kind of love, you have to be born of God and know God. But if you're not loving one another, it's possible to be born of God and not love one another because you don't know God. You don't have a revelation of God. You may be forgiven of your sins, but he that doesn't love doesn't know God. He didn't say we're not born of God. That's why you see so many Christians that are born of God. They're born again, and yet they're not loving, and they're not loving each other, and they don't know what love is, and they're confused about love, and they don't know how to explain love to their children. And on and on it goes. It's because we don't know God. So I think that was so simple. I don't know how anybody can miss it. But John said, he that loves is born of God and knows God. He that does not love does not know God. So it's important, yes, that you get born of God, that you receive God's love for you. But now you got to know God. You have to be taught love. You have to be taught who God is. Because God is love. And that's number three. He says here in verse, in verse um, eight, he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. That is powerful. That is life changing right there. If the Holy Spirit, if you'll yield to the Holy Spirit and let him let him illuminate your mind let him illuminate our minds then then we can rest in the love of God and faith just explode in our lives he said God is love 
He didn't say God has love. He said God is love. See, if you have something, it can be measured. It can be contained. It can be different and different measures. If you have water, you can have a few ounces in a cup of water. I have a cup here. And the water, I have it. And so it can be measured. It has boundaries. It can increase. It can decrease. You can have more or less of water if you have water. You can fill your bathtub up and you have more water in a bathtub than you can get in a cup. But you can also fill up your swimming pool and you can have more gallons, hundreds of gallons of water in your swimming pool. And can I get a witness? It has boundaries. It can be measured. And it is more water in a swimming pool than a bathtub and more water in a bathtub than a cup. And all have boundaries. All can be measured. And you can have more or less when you have something. God does not have love for you, brothers and sisters. God is love. God doesn't have water that he divvies out to different people who are at different levels and, and stages in their spiritual growth. And so he has more water for this person and less water for that person. No, God doesn't have water water. God is H2O. He is H2O. And there's a difference in me having water and being water. God doesn't have love for you and have love for me and have more love for John than he has for Bill. No, God is love to Bill and he is love to Joe. And he is love to me. What he is to one, he is to another. And that has no boundaries. That cannot be measured. It's the same love that he has for me that he has for you. He doesn't love me more because I've been maybe more obedient and I'm in ministry than someone who's been slightly disobedient and are in what the world calls just secular activities or work. I don't believe there's anything that you do that's secular. I believe everything we do is as unto the Lord and sacred. But the point I'm trying to make is I used to think God loved certain people more than he loved me. See, when you believe, now listen to me carefully, when you believe God has love, when you believe God has love that can be measured, then you'll always believe that he has more of it for somebody else than for you. And that's the danger of this, and it kills your faith. It breeds unbelief and doubt when you question God's love for you, when you question how God loves you. I think one of the biggest revelations just took me by surprise, for one thing, and a while to really accept, and that's in John 17, where Jesus is praying, and he's praying what is his last priestly prayer on the earth before he goes to the cross, and there are just tremendous things revealed in this prayer that Jesus is praying. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures here that he's not just praying for the disciples, those in his immediate orbit but that he's praying for us. And the scriptures reveal that as I read this. And so let's look at, at, at how Jesus is praying. Let's look at what Jesus is praying. And I just pray the Holy Spirit just illuminate your heart. Open the eyes of your understanding that you may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of the glory of this inheritance is in the saints, in all of us. He says in verse, verse 20 of John 17, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, 
That's you and I, brothers and sisters. We have faith in God today because of the Gospels. We have exercised faith because we heard and received the word of the apostles, of the disciples. And so he's not just praying for them, but he's praying for you and I because we have believed on him through their, their word, through their testimony, through their witness of who Jesus is and what he did for us. Verse 21 says that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Now, I don't want to get off here. I don't want to lose my time. I need to get at least this point done. That right there is the greatest evangelistic tool that is yet to be used on the planet in regards to witnessing to the world. It's our unity that is a witness to the world that God sent Jesus. This is why Satan divides us. This is why there's so much arguing and strife and division in the body of Christ at large is because Satan knows that our unity is our greatest witness of the reality of who Jesus is and that God sent Jesus. That is so powerful and so new to people. I'm going to read it again. That they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me. Our unity convicts the world of who Jesus is. This is why I labor to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace until we come to the unity of the faith, that I just refuse to get in strife with anybody and division and allow things to separate us. There's a lot of things people say I don't agree with. There's a lot of things that people say that I believe they're wrong. But they are my brothers and sisters in the Lord. And unless it's outright blasphemy, unless they're denying the Lord that has saved us, the only way to salvation, the only way to the Father, then I'm going to be merciful and patient and, and work with people because our unity is a witness to the world. Verse 22 says, And the glory which you gave me, I've given them that they may be one, just as we are one. So God's glory, God's presence, God's unconditional love is, is what bonds us to God. And when we learn to receive God's kind of love, now we can love people in our orbit. We, 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 have, to, we have to learn God's love uh, vertically first. That God loved us first. We only love God because he loved us first. He extended a benevolent, unconditional kind of love to me. And now he wants me horizontally to extend that kind of love to my family and my fellow man. He says in verse 23, I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one. That the world may know that you have sent me. There's the second time he says, our unity is a witness to the world that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Well, years ago, that just jumped off the pages and I thought I misread it. I thought that can't be true. What's the hook? What's the condition? What am I missing? I mean, it was amazing how doubt just filled my mind when that jumped out, uh, off the pages. Jumped out, in this case, my phone. I got my Bible on my phone. I'm not on Facebook here. I'm, I'm reading my scriptures in my phone. And so it just jumps out, at the, out of the phone at you that God has loved us with the same exact love he has for Jesus well, you need to let that sink in, brothers and sisters, and you need to get rooted and grounded in that kind of love. That is an unconditional love. It's an unmerited love. It's an unoccasioned love. And it's the same love. Think about that. That the love God has for you right now is the same exact love he has for Jesus. Nobody doubts God's love for Jesus. Nobody questions God's love for Jesus. If you believed that God loved you 
With the same exact love he has for Jesus, you can believe for anything, saints. You can believe for mountains to be removed. The impossible becomes possible. You can actually believe when you pray that God hears you. And if you know God hears you, 1 John chapter 5 says that if we pray according to his will, we know he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have the petitions we desire of him. That is powerful. How do, you, how do you believe for that? How do you rest in that kind of even faith? Because you know God's love for you. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus prayed, would God hear him? Well, yeah, God hears Jesus. If Jesus prays and God hears him, will God answer Jesus' prayers? Well, of course, Brother Dwayne. God will answer Jesus' prayers. Well, why do you believe God hears Jesus, and why do you believe God answers Jesus' prayers? I'll tell you why. You, you believe that because you know in your heart Jesus is perfect. You know in your heart he never had a bad thought, he never said a bad word, he never did a bad deed. He not only did not do all the wrong things, he did all the right things. And so you believe God hears Jesus because of his conduct. You believe God answers Jesus' prayers because of, of Jesus' holiness. Think about that for a minute. Why do you think God doesn't hear you? Why do you think God won't answer your prayer? Because you have a sin consciousness. Because you know you've not had anything but perfect thoughts. You know your thoughts. You know how wrong your thoughts are and your attitude is. You know your past. You know that you've not always said the right thing, that you've mis misspoke. You know you've mishandled your spouse, perhaps, or your children, and maybe members of the body of Christ. No, you think that God's love for you is still conditional. You think God's presence is still conditional. You think God hears you based on your holiness, not the holiness of Jesus. You think God blesses you according to your works, according to your holiness, according to your efforts, not according to the works of Jesus and the finished works that were completed at the cross. No, you need to get rooted and grounded in God's kind of love. You need to know and have a knowledge that passes knowledge, a comprehension that passes human ability to comprehend that God loves you with the same exact love he has for Jesus. I'm sorry, I, I'm hearing myself and, and I'm preaching myself happy here. I'm actually meditating as I'm talking to you, how much God loves me, and that the Word of God, Jesus Himself, in prayer, in the presence of God, at the throne of God, said, and I'll read it again, that you have, let me read the whole thing, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Jesus in prayer was saying our unity will be a witness to the world, but God's love for us that is the exact same. <laughs> Calm down, Dwayne. The love God has for me. See, I'm hearing me. I'm thinking of me too here. The love God has for you is the same exact love that he has for Jesus. Listen, and you receiving that love is a witness to the world that God sent Jesus. You need to receive God's love. You need to get rooted and grounded in God's love. You need a revelation of the height, the width, the depth, and the length of God's love for you that passes all knowledge. And it'll cause you to be filled with the fullness of Christ. Man, that is so good. I almost wish I could just come through the screen and, and open your brain, open your head up, and just dump that in there. <laughs> because we all need to abide in his love. We need to live here. That God loves you, and I know you made a mistake. Repent. Call upon the name of the Lord. Confess the thing. God is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. There is no excuse for not receiving God's love. And man, when you get rooted and grounded in it, faith works. 
well, I'm trying to rush. I'm not going to make it. I'm running out of time again. But, man, I have these messages available absolutely free. You can go to my website, pastordwayne.com, pastordwayne, D-U-A-N-E.com, and that'll take you to the home page. And I have a series called The Ecosystem of Faith, and I deal with hope and love and patience. I also have in an audio file, absolutely free, you can also order any of these on CD, absolutely free, and we'll mail it to you. Uh, but I have a series called How Faith Works. I also have other teachings on the love of God. And you can go to the search engine on the homepage and just type in God's love, and it'll show you different series that we have absolutely free. You can also call us at area code 580-4040-DSM. Area code 580 580- 44376. We have prayer partners available to agree with you in prayer, to pray for you that the Holy Spirit will even help you see, understand, and comprehend God's love for you. We have a lot of things available to you. You can also go to the tab on the store, and all of my books are now available on our website. We're excited about that. You can order those and other, other things. Well, I pray this has been a blessing to you. If you can help us with the broadcast financially, that would be awesome. Please pray about being a partner. It's our partners that make all this available, and we're growing so fast. We need more partners. If you don't feel led to partner or even give, we want to give. We want to sow still into you. Contact us and let us be a blessing. Thanks for watching. Hey, we want to take a moment to say thank you to our impact partners for your generosity. It's because of your partnership that we're able to continue to give away Dwayne's teachings completely free. To become a partner, you can visit our website or call the number on the screen. Thanks so much for your generosity and for taking part in our mission to help people grow in Christ. Thanks so much for watching. All of our content is available for free because of the generous donations from partners of Dwayne Sheriff Ministries. Visit our website, pastordwayne.com, to find the full message series and to learn how you can help partner with us. We hope you enjoyed this message.